If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 119, and don't panic, we're not going to we're not going to do the whole the whole 119th Psalm, but we are going to take our text out of the tournament this morning. Psalms uh, 119, and we're going to begin reading in the very first verse. Psalms 119, in the first verse, the Bible says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and they that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to do, excuse me, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were di directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with an uprightness of heart. When I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, I will keep thy statutes. O oh, forsake me not utterly. Verse 9, Withal, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for our church. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. We pray that you, for just a little while, would let us set the world aside and focus in on your word. God, bless it to our hearts. According to your mercy and grace, we pray it. Amen. Yeah. And maybe some not so familiar verses this morning. I have uh, in my Bible where at least one time I've heard the first eight verses read in a, uh, in a public service. I try to do all that in my Bible so I can uh, remember. But and since I've had this Bible in 2012, I've never seen in a public service verses 9 and 10 read. And uh, they are broken into separate sonnets, but this is an entirety of a psalm, and that's why I picked up 9 and 10 as well. And the theme seems to be that with a whole heart. Now, uh, it is very, very difficult on this flesh to do anything with a whole or complete heart or a heart that's completely dedicated to that purpose. Uh, it is just a difficult thing on the flesh because we have a thousand things at one time uh, vying for our attention and looking to uh, take our attention away from the Lord. Now, the Psalms uh, uh, are not really, and uh, I'm assuming the uh, top thing is a name for that portion of the Psalm. I'm not sure about that. But here it says, blessed are the undefiled in the way. Now, I think that's very uh, interesting language there because it doesn't say blessed are the sinless. It just simply says blessed are the undefiled in the way. So what is the way? It doesn't say in the ways. Uh, the, the Lord Jesus said it of uh, himself, I am the way. And here we find the individual, this person, blessed is the one who's in the way, who, who is doing what is right, who is seeking the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we live in a day of religion, but we don't live in a day where people seek after the Lord. Um, uh, to be saved is, is glorious, but quite another thing to seek after the Lord. Uh, there are two ways to seek after the Lord. One is the Word of God, and the other is true prayer. And both are very, very difficult on the flesh. Uh, it, it is contrary to what the flesh enjoys. It's, it's contrary to what the flesh uh, 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 likes to spend its time doing. So what the psalmist asks in one sense is very, very difficult. 
Blessed are the undefiled uh, or the sincere or the complete. Blessed are the undefiled in the way singular. If you want to uh, be blessed by God, it's just one that way that that occurs. Then, who said, then in the second verse, who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, the, the law has never been uh, set aside. The law has never been called. The law has never been done away with. The Bible says it is a schoolmaster. It teaches us what sin is about. And, and, and more deeply than that, it teaches us what we're about. Uh, that our nature is contrary uh, in every way to the Word of God, that our, that our nature does not really embrace the Word of God at all, but rather it's contrary. But by the goodness of God and by the, uh, the sweetness of His grace, we, we embrace the Word of God. And the law, becomes, the law becomes something that we can understand. Can we keep it? No. But do we love it? Well, we should. It, it is the Word of God. And so we find that the psalmist um, looks closely at these people and the condition of the people that follow the Word of the Lord. Verse 2, Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. Now, I think that is a, a very interesting word because there's two testimonies or two testaments that we know about, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and, and already here he says, blessed are they that keep the testimonies. Uh, and if you want a blessing of God, keep the Word of God. Keep it near you. Keep it part of your life. Read it daily. Embrace it on a routine basis. Keep His testimonies. And then you think about that Word even further, and you have the testimony of Isaiah. You have the testimony of Jeremiah. You have the testimony of Ezra and Nehemiah, all written down and how that they served uh, how they served the Lord Elijah Elisha all recorded for our benefit keep the testimonies and another thing that we should do and I've never been disciplined enough to do it in all my life and I've tried more than once is write your own testimony down write uh, a diary uh, show what the Lord has shown you and it will be a great blessing to people down the road. And, and so uh, one way that we can gain blessing is hearing the testimony of the others, the things contained in this book. Beyond that, the testimony of people you know. You know, it, it wasn't so many years ago that people would testify in church and tell what the Lord had done for them and how he saved their soul and, and what he had uh, brought them through and would give him praise and glory. Keep those things. Blessed is the man that keep his testimonies. And they that seek him, and here's our text, with a whole heart. Seek him with a whole, a full, a complete heart. Now, have you ever thought about your undivided attention? You know, there's very little things in this world that get your undivided attention. Uh, now, when a doctor has good news or bad news, at least for the moment, he has your undivided attention. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, some people have a challenge of... Uh, <laughs> listening to lecture like at a school or something like that than others. Donna had trouble listening to lecture more than I did. Um, and and uh, kind of goes with hyperactivity and it's very difficult. But the psalmist says we've got to do it with our whole heart, with everything about us, looking for the face of the Almighty. Now certainly in a physical sense we can't see God but the, the desire that Moses had, I think, is, it, it, is covered in this, not just to see who he was, but to fully experience God. That's what, that's what a whole heart means. You want him 
more than you want your children. You, you, want, you want it more than you, you want the very breath of life itself. That is seeking God with a whole heart. Now, this is when it becomes difficult is when you set your heart on it and you don't necessarily like what you learn. I think, I think Israel learned that the hard way. But seeking your whole heart. How, how do we do that in 2022? How do we do that when there's so much going on around us? We have these. We literally have the world at our fingertips. And with that much knowledge and that much distraction, how do we seek the Lord with a whole heart? It's a... Uh, it seems nigh to impossible, but I don't think the Almighty would call us to do it if it weren't possible. So I say this first, you're not going to seek Him wholeheartedly when you spend the majority of your time here. And, and everyone, like me, you have to keep a job, but that's at least eight hours of your day. Uh, how could we possibly wholeheartedly? Seek the, you know, you know, one individual that is recorded that we know did that for sure for three and a half years or three years was John the Baptist. And he came out of those woods a different man. The Bible says he, had, he ate locusts and wild honey and he came out with just a, a, a skin for clothes. After three and a half years, along with God, seeking Him wholeheartedly. And with that, what was His message? Was His message, discard the law and come to Jesus? No, well, Jesus really hadn't been uh, identified yet. What was His message? Very simple. One word, repent. Three and a half years of private study, seeking God wholeheartedly, and one word, repent. And quite, uh, quite not surprisingly, the very first message that the Lord Jesus preached, very same thing, repent. So the first thing in seeking God wholeheartedly, get rid of some distractions. If it's one hour a day, Take one hour a day and focus on the person of Christ. Focus on this book. Focus on what this has to offer. Just a small uh, amount of every day. Seek him with a whole heart. Verse 3. And they also do no iniquity. So we begin to find some things that can interfere with seeking the face of God. And, and, and that is iniquity, uh, sin. Sin can interrupt us seeking him wholeheartedly, fully, completely with the inner man. Uh, the, the sinlessness that Christ gives us, seeking him that way, iniquity or sin is a hindrance as much to the lost as it is to the redeemed, and sometimes more so. And, and so we find that we must we must watch that in our life. Also, uh, they also do no iniquity. They walk in His ways, meaning God's, meaning the Almighty, meaning Jehovah. Now, you know, uh, I, I preach separation very frequently, and it, it is a true Bible doctrine, but it's not for us to look like freaks. It's for us that we'll be already focused in that direction or with everything about our life. See, it's, it's, it's very difficult to go to the Lord and seek Him wholeheartedly when your life is laden with sin. Uh, you have all those interruptions before you even get to the point that you can, can, you can seek of who He is wholeheartedly, completely, every fiber of your being seeking the person of God. When, when we do that, we will be greatly blessed. Thou hast commanded us, verse 4, Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. 
Now, precept, precepts, the word, the subject matter, uh, the concepts of the word of God, to do it diligently, to do it by detail, to do it specifically. Uh, uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. That's how we're to preach, teach, and learn the word of God. Do it diligently. D do you know why we do specific things? and where it's found in the Word of God. What about our order of services? Come in, sing, Sunday school, preach, dismiss, meal. Where does that come from? It's not in the Word of God. It's nothing wrong with it. But it's certainly not engraved on the stones from Moses. But it does say, let everything be done decently and in order. And, and, and so, learning that about the Scripture is integral of, to learning, experiencing God wholeheartedly. We have to know what the Word of God says. And if you don't, you soon will be uh, very much led away uh, by what feels good to the, fle the flesh. Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Now, the psalmist here understands the nature of man probably much better than we do because he says, oh, I wish, oh, that my ways, oh, I wish that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. And so we see that the ungodly nature of man, the depravity of man, we are not bent that way. And he knew it. So what we have to do is work our own against our own will if we really want to seek the will of God. If we want to study the will of God, it's against our nature to do so. So if you want to be in the will of God and you want this wholeheartedness that the psalmist speaks of, it's going to hurt the flesh. You're going to be going against the grain of the flesh to do so. And, uh, and realizing that, uh, you know what? I really believe that some people, uh, the reason that that is, uh, some people get discouraged. They don't recognize the fact that this is not with the natural man. That it is not man's Nature to study and look for the Word of God. And so when they begin to do so, and, and it's discouraging and it's difficult, they immediately get discouraged. They think that it's not possible. Verse 6, Then shall I not be ashamed when I have unto, uh, when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Now, he said, in other words, <laughs> he was saying, I won't be ashamed if I look at each part, each sentence, each piece of the Word of God. I, I won't be ashamed if I do that. So then conversely must be true. If we don't get into the Word of God, we, we are ashamed. We, we're ashamed to ourselves. We're ashamed to the Lord that saved us. We're not wholeheartedly after the mind of God. It is a very, very difficult thing. But oh, how blessed it is to the people that do it. That take time out of their schedule and look unto the Word of God and to desire the Word of God and, and, and to uh, spend that, that time in real prayer and seek after Him wholeheartedly. You know what? We serve a very loving Father. And if we if we really seek after him wholeheartedly, listen, you won't come back, you won't come away from that empty. You, you won't come away from that uh, missing something. He'll be faithful to that. He, he'll give you something for your time. And you'll and, and it, it, it'll be it'll be worth every effort that you spend when you come out of when you come toward him wholeheartedly. Another problem that modern Christians have. It's coming to him with the anticipation of reward. In other words, the, the presence of the Almighty and his direction in the Word is not enough. We want something for it. Uh, 
these preachers that teach health and wealth and uh, you know you're going to get riches if you just do that it's garbage it, it's trash and uh, people come away disappointed do they not uh, if you come anticipating that you might as well not you might as well not even to begin with See, a pure heart seeking after the Lord wants nothing more than His sweet presence. Nothing more. And you know what? People who do that with a whole heart, they'll come away satisfied with just one rich word. You know, I, I often think about, uh, you, you know, the hymn about coming to the garden alone. Uh, while the dew, the dew is still on the roses. The last verse says this. But he bids me go. And whoever the writer was was very satisfied with whatever little bit of time he or she got in the presence of the Almighty. And, and that's what this individual, that's what we, as the Lord's people, if we seek him wholeheartedly, these are the results. And we see these things that interfere. Verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. So he says, when I get that little nugget, when I get that little piece, when I understand your judgments, when I understand your righteousness, I'm going to praise you. And you know what? The person receiving the whole, uh, the person with a whole heart and the one receiving that, and the whole, they'll share it with people. They'll say, let me show you what, what I saw. And you know, sometimes the They'll look at you like a cow looking at a newborn door and, and they don't understand it or appreciate it. And the reason why is to give it to you. But, but that's part of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for showing that to me and giving me that understanding. And we ought to praise Him. When, when we're in this book and, and we're seeking Him wholeheartedly, when we get something, praise Him for it. I will keep thy statues Oh, forsake me not utterly. Now, two things. Number one, a piece of seeking the Lord wholeheartedly is following Him in the Scripture. Your, your daily life backing up the truth of the Word of God. When, when you're convinced of what this Bible teaches, you're putting it into play in your life, whether it be tithing or church attendance or, or, uh, or dress or whatever it may be. You do that. You keep the statutes that he gives you. And then he makes this statement, I think, very, very unusual. Oh, forsake me not utterly. He praises for the teachings. He praises the Lord for those little nuggets he gets from time to time. And then he says, forsake me not utterly. You know what? When you don't get them too often, you appreciate it a lot, a lot more, don't you? Mama used to tell me about her and Patsy as little girls and uh, all the federal land around here then they were using for maneuvers in the Second World War effort. And... Uh, Patsy and Mama didn't get much store chocolate. What, what chocolate they got, my nanny made. Uh, fudge and stuff like that, pies. And she said that when the soldiers went by, they would like whoop and hollow and, and scream at them and they'd throw those rations off the truck for Mama and Patsy. And she said, that's just like store candy for them. Uh, and, and, they would, and they would dig in uh, and they would enjoy it. But sometimes they drive right on by. Sometimes you got, you know what? They understood that. And, and you know what Patsy and Mother did? They'd holler louder next time. And that, that's what, what we, if they, you know, if one day he passed you, seek him wholeheartedly the next day and holler louder. Look for him more. Desire, de, uh, desire him more than you did. And, 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 and we'll be fulfilled that way. And the writer here understood that precisely. Verse 9, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Or how shall an un, uh, a young man cleanse his way? Or make it in, in a way that follows God? By taking heed thereunto 
according to thy word. You want to make your, your life whole. You want to be one of those individuals that seeks him completely. This is where it starts. This, this is the beginning. And the psalmist understood that perfectly. Verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. That is a that is a mouthful. I wonder who this psalmist is and if he was true in any way in which he said this was, I'm assuming it was a true statement, but what a marvelous statement it was. When I compare that to myself, I, I feel feeble and weak because I cannot say that. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. If you don't know this, you're not going to be able to find the Lord. Verse 10. With my whole heart, I have sought thee. Oh, let, not, oh, let me not wonder from thy commandments. Whole heart. Uh, everything about you seeking the Lord. Now, we're going to read very briefly about an individual that set his mind to do this. If you will, turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 22, and we'll look at the life of the child of kings very quickly. Um, 2 Samuel 22 in the first verse. Uh, I'm sorry, 2 Kings, not 2 Samuel. 2 Kings 22 in the very first verse. 2 Kings 22 in the very first verse. The Bible says, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. Now you think about an eight-year-old child taking a throne to, to begin his rule. That's Gracie's age. Gracie becoming queen. Josiah becoming king. You know, when something like that happens, all you can depend on is God. That was his move. You know what? Josiah's daddy was taken by the hand of the Almighty God. So you have to depend on the results. Never ceases to amaze me when God uh, acts and we want to we wanna resist it. We want to say, oh, that can't be. You know why Josiah was king at eight years old? It's because God wanted him to be. And except uh, uh, just recognizing that will give you peace that passes all understanding and not stress about his age. And he reigned, and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jedidiah, and the daughter of Adoniah of Boskath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And he walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. What a wonderful testimony when your body is laid in the dirt if something like that was said about you. Now we'll say, see in a minute how that occurred and the way that occurred goes right back to everything else, the Word of God. Jo Josiah got a hold of a, uh, of a set of the Scripture, and he got a hold of a good prophet or a preacher in that day, and you know what? He succumbed to it. He was obedient to it and gave him a very, very, very successful reign. And so we see as the Lord's people that... Uh, this ought to be the standard for us. Verse 3, And it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah, and if you can add, that means he was 26 at the time, that, uh, that the kings sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the house of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Helkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the Lord have gathered of the people. And let them deliver it unto the hand of the doers of the work, that they might uh, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And let us give it to the doers of the uh, work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house. Now, let me say very briefly, it's a wonderful thing in here. Notice the doers are mentioned three times. 
Uh, I want to be a doer instead of just somebody that sits by and watch, don't you? The doers were being uh, being recognized under the carpenters and the builders and the masons to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Howbeit, there was no reckoning made with them of the money that they delivered into their hand because they dealt faithfully. In other words, they didn't even want the money. They did it out of the goodness of their heart. They did it out of the, the uh, their own uh, dedication unto the Lord. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the, the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and delivered it into the hand of them that do the work. And they have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe shewed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest had delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. Now, that's the response to the word of God of one of God's people. Now, you can read the rest of that text. We're going to go over and read a little bit more in a minute, but not there. But if the Word of God doesn't impact you, you probably need to be born again. In other words, if you can hear it and hear it and hear it, and it's like water off a duck's back, something's terribly wrong. Yeah. And, and Shaphan read it, and Josiah heard it, and the results was in Josiah's life. He was never the same again. He, 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 it, it impacted him to the point that he turned his entirety of his life around. And listen, Josiah wasn't a mean person. Josiah wasn't wicked like Asaph and some of those before him. Josiah was a good man and was still impacted unbelievably by the word of God. In other words, you don't have to be a, a whoremonger or a killer or a murderer for the Word of God to impact your life, nor should you be. And, and so we find that to be true here, that even though Josiah was a good man, he was overwhelmed by the Word of God. Uh, now go with me to 23 in the verse first, in the first verse. 2 Kings 23 in the first verse, the Bible says, And the king, who was Josiah, and the king sinned, and they gathered unto all the elders of Judah and to Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by, and the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. Now, I want you to get the fullness of that because it said that the priest stood up and read every word of the first five books. Now, y'all think I get long winded, right? Can you imagine? I would say that's at least a six hour read. I mean, each of those books have about 50 chapters and he read the whole thing from beginning to end. Now you will see the response in God's people. It, it wasn't falling over and, and being mad. They were captivated. See, people who are seeking the Lord are captivated by his word. They're, they're tr totally enthronged in it. And listening to it is more than anything else in their life. That was the situation. They weren't bored, and another reason, they hadn't heard it in years. They didn't even know. Can you imagine being the point of a temple, and you will see the result that happens after this just in a moment, but there being a full set of scriptures down at the house, and the king and the priest not even knowing about it. That was their situation. That's when we ignore the word of God. Verse 3 
And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord. He made a new covenant. He was dedicating himself and Israel to the Lord God. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimony and his statutes in all their heart and their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in the book. And all the people stood in the covenant, in the agreement, in the dedication to the Lord. That's a group of people who's wholehearted, who, who is entirely bent on serving God. Verse 4, And the king commanded Helkiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second order, and the keepers of the door, to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal. Now, if we're going to set, set, set on him wholeheartedly, I want you to see the first thing they had to get rid of is those little idolatrous things in their lives. The things that they thought held so much value. And, and you think the blasphemy involved with that, they had Baal idols in the house of God. I saw something on Facebook the other day. It was a King James scripture, and I couldn't even like it because there on the on the display with the King James uh, scripture was a crucified Christ, Catholic mass. You know what? That's a stink in the nostrils of God. That shows how ignorant those people really are, does it not? How foolish. You know what? Catholic churches need to get that junk in. Throw it out. It's no more than a the sign. Of course, that's who they are. But I want you to see that this event in chapter, I mean, excuse me, in verse uh, 4 had an impact. I mean, the, the, the covenant in verse 3 had an impact in their daily lives. They began to, get, began to clean the temple. And the king commanded Helkiah, the high priest, and uh, of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of the heaven and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kedron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel and he put down the idolatrous priests so part of the part of the individuals that worked in the temple were nothing more than idolaters he put them down See, when you're seeking the whole, uh, your, the Lord with your whole heart, there's things that have to go. And we'll find that Josiah understood that. Whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of, Ju of Judah and in the places around about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal in the, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to the host of the heavens. Uh, he, he got rid of them all. And, and all that is nothing more than these signs and stuff, uh, zodiac signs and all the trash that goes with that. Uh, they don't know anything more about tomorrow than I do. And, and we find that God's people had to get that out of their life. Now, no one under the sound of my voice looks at the Zodiac. Nobody uh, looks up to their uh, fortunes. But I want you to see there have, that often there is something there. You know, something as simple as an illness can interfere with your relationship with God. And if you don't believe that, Remember, when the king got the news, you shall die and not live. Set thine house in order. Yeah. He turned over to the wall, and I'm not saying I did the very same thing. I don't know. He called out to God and cried. He says, I'll grant you 15 more years. But in that 15 years, the worst king of Israel that ever was was born. See, God's will is always best, is it not? Mm -hmm. See, the king at that time was in the will of the Almighty, and he didn't like he didn't like it. So what did he do? He got out of the will of the Almighty. Oh Lord, I've served you all these years. Grant unto me 
Okay, if that's what you want. See, you be very cautious of getting in the permissive will of God. And that, that's, that's what he was in. You know when you're going to find him with a whole heart when you're in the perfect will of God? And we, we see the trash. We see the, in fact, this is his grandson. This is Manasseh's grandson. <laughs> and so we, we often find it's not as easy as we think. It's not what we, when we get a message from God, it's not always, it is not always comfortable to us. And so they got rid of those. Verse 7, and he broke down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. Now, I'm going to hit this a little bit, and we're going to be done, but I want you to see that gay bars is not a new, it's not something new. The houses of the Sodomites have been around for years. Now, the blasphemous thing was that they built it right next door to the temple. You know what that, that's a sneak stink in the nostrils of the Almighty. Right, and you know what? Josiah went down, and he knocked him out of the way. Now, also, I want you to see that the women had woven those rugs. You don't know what those are. You know those stupid things, dream catchers? That's exactly what they had right there. If you got one of them in your house, go burn it up. We, uh, that, that's nothing more than it. You know what? <laughs> We're not going to catch a dream. <laughs> We're not going to catch a dream. Well, what we want to do is catch the will of the Almighty. Uh, Go after him your whole life. Look at everything about you. And you know what? It's a very, very, very difficult thing to do. Because there's so many distractions. So many things that get in the way. So many things with this flesh. So many things with this life. Just, just living. We need to seek him with our whole heart. 